Hello, today we will look at some foot ulcers. We are dealing with diabetes and we know that diabetes can cause foot ulcers. And we know that foot ulcers is a terrible, terrible, terrible and very common disease in diabetic patients. It's really, really common. And the thing with foot ulcers is that it can cause so severe wounds that needs to be amputated. And that, therefore it's so important to make these videos. It's so important to make the treatment of foot ulcers a big priority in all patients with diabetes. Every patient with diabetes has to be checked for foot ulcers. And what do we check now? And why do we check it? We, we, deal, we dealt with why, but how do we check it? We check it with a classification system that we will be dealing with today, the te Texas University of Texas classification system. And this was composed in order to help doctors in classifying the different types of wounds that we can see. So the main two things that you need to remember when you classify something is something called grade and something called stage. If we look at grade, we are only do dealing with the depth of the wound. So how deep is the wound that the patient comes with? You look at his foot, if you see that it's only in the superficial skin, then you know it's grade zero. There's only superficial damage. If it's uh, involving the whole skin, meaning the skin, plus, so the epidermis, the dermis, the subcutaneous tissue, then we are dealing with grade one. If we go below to the joints, then we have grade two. And if we see bones, or if we can probe bones, then we have grade three. That was grading. So you look at the patient's foot, that is the first thing you do as a doctor, and you grade them from zero to three in this order. And then you look at the stage. Stage means if we have an infection or not, if we have a peripheral vascular disease or not. If we have nothing of these two, then we have stage zero. If we have infection, then we have no, no, stage A. So we don't, this is, you see, this is important. As you see, I also mix this up. So you need to somehow remember that we have grade, meaning we are dealing with numbers, and we have stage dealing with uh, letters. So A to D. So we have A being no infection, no peripheral artery disease. Stage B being that we have infection. Stage C, we have peripheral artery disease. And stage D, we have both of them. So, which is more important, infection or peripheral artery disease? I mean, which is the most severe case? Actually, you see, depending, depending on this staging, we have that the peripheral artery disease is more severe as infection. And of course, if we have both, that's the most severe. And depending on these eight things now, so we have four grades and four stages, now we can combine this and make a system out of it. And we will, tell, uh, we will look at this in, in this way. I'm a family doctor and the patient comes to me. I need to decide if the patient will go to a vascular surgeon or if he, go, if he will go to a, a general surgeon or if the patient will go to the hospital or if the patient will stay with me and I will manage this patient. And if I see that the patient, for example, have a stage C, meaning that the vascular system is involved, so peripheral artery disease, then I send the patient to the vascular surgeon. If I see that the patient is having a stage B, which was infection, then I send the patient to the hospital, to an infectologist, or to an internal medicine department where he can get intravenously antibiotics because he has a severe infection. If I see that the patient has stage D, meaning both of these, then we have to co collaborate. We have to collaborate with the vascular surgeon. We have to collaborate with the internal medicine or infectologist and so on. And, and depending on the grade, then we can decide if the patient will get a general surgeon or not. Because if the grade, meaning the depth, is more than joints and bones, meaning if the uh, wound is so severe that it's involving joints and bones, then the surgeon, a general surgeon needs to be included and where he can make the debridement. Debridement means that we will clean the wound. We will clean the wound, we will uh, cut it with a scalpel, we will uh, use scissors, and in that way we can cut out all the dead tissue that we have in a wound. And all this dead tissue can be best treated, so best debride with a scalpel. And that is a surgical operation. And that has to be made when we have involvement of joint and 
bone and that has to be made then in the operating room. Otherwise, we can do it as a family doctor. If we have only skin involvement or, or superficial skin, then the family doctor can also do it with some scissors. And then after this, uh, you have some healthy living tissue there because you cut out all the negative, all the bad tissues, and then you can have a, a very fresh new start. And then you will put some dressings, you will cover the wound, and you will cover it with some nutrients and, and they, they, thereby this wound will be amazingly good, okay? And so, so what, I, what I want you to uh, always to remember is that we have a collaboration of many doctors here. And as we saw, the stages decided which, uh, which department the patient get, get into and the grade decide rather if the patient can stay at the family doctor or uh, needs to be operated in the operating room. So once again, let's take some cases. If we have a patient now who has, let's say, grade uh, one, he has a very uh, a skin problem, it's superficial, we can say it's involving the skin and uh, the family doctor uh, can actually cut, make this debridement his, himself, so make the surgical cut himself, then he will do it that. He don't need to send the patient anywhere. If we take another case where we have a patient with grade two or three, meaning it's involving joint or bone, then please send the patient uh, directly to the general surgeon where he will treat it oper uh, in the operation room. Then we, we will divide if the patient, for example, have uh, stage A, then he has no infection, no peripheral arthritis. Then we don't need any vascular surgeon. We don't need any uh, infectologist. We don't need any hospital. We can treat it at the family doctor place. We don't need any of these. But if he has an infection, then depending on how severe the infection is, so we have stage B, if he has an infection, and the family doctor says, now nah, I think we can manage this with some wound dressings, we can manage this with, with some tablets, with antibiotics, then we will do that. If we see that the infection is very severe, then we need to send the patient to the hospital because, he, as we said, we need to give intravenous um, uh, antibiotics. And then we said stage C was the uh, uh, peripheral artery disease case where we have ischemia, then we send the patient to the vascular surgeon because we need to make a, vas a revascularization. That meaning when we have peripheral artery disease, the arteries are so narrowed that the blood supply to this foot is damaged. So no blood is coming to the foot and therefore these ulcers will never heal. It will always be bad, always. It doesn't matter how much antibiotics you put there, it doesn't matter how much wound dressings, if the, the uh, main problem is the artery supply. Because as you know, arteries are transporting immune system cells. And if the immune system cannot reach the location of the wound, there is no chance for the wound to heal. Therefore, you need to uh, do a revascularization and you have two types mainly, endovascular or open surgical. And that is something that the vascular surgeon has to decide. We will make another video about that one. So in conclusion, let's summarize. When you have a wound, please uh, look at three main things, I would say. Infection, peripheral artery disease, and the wound depth. The wound depth was the grading, and then the staging was the uh, peripheral artery disease and the infection part. So grade uh, zero was superficial when we're dealing with depth. Uh, one was then full skin, two was then joints, and three was the bones. When we're dealing with the staging, zero is no infection, no, no peripheral artery disease. Uh, stage B was the infection, stage C was the peripheral artery disease, and stage D was both of them. And I thank you very much for listening. Take care. Bye-bye.